Newt News is brought to you in part by The Village Bank. Your village, your bank. As of May 5th, 2020, Newton has a total of 585 confirmed COVID-19 cases. And according to the city's website, there are 86 COVID-19 related deaths in Newton as of May 5th, 2020. In Massachusetts, there are 1,754 new cases reported, bringing the total of confirmed cases to 72,025, with 5% currently hospitalized as of May 5th. The total number of deaths in Massachusetts is now 4,420. Governor Baker has ordered as of Wednesday, May 6th, that everyone must wear a mask when physical distancing is not possible. This includes customers and employees of stores who may be declined entrance if not wearing a mask. Exemptions for this order are children under two and those unable to wear one due to a medical condition. While it's not ordered to wear a mask outside, the governor is advising people to do so, especially when the streets are crowded and the six feet separation cannot be accommodated. Newton's Health and Human Services Commissioner Deborah Youngblood issued an emergency order for the Newton police to enforce the governor's order. The Newton police will educate and encourage face masks and perhaps provide one in most instances, but the police do have an option to issue a civil fine of $300 for a violation of the order if necessary. I am here with Councillor Albright, the Ward 2 Councillor at Large, as well as President of the City Councilor, uh, Council. Councillor Albright, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to discuss what's going on in the City Council to kind of provide us an update of what's happening. Sure, happy to be with you on this lovely Zoom call. <laughs> the, the wave of the future, we'll yeah. see. at least the new norm for now. Yeah. Um, I'd like to kind of go over a little bit of an update for uh, construction within the city in terms of um, how is construction moving along in terms of you know, current construction, how is that going? So the construction prog projects that were uh, creating new units of housing have been going on right along under state guidelines for, and they've had to reduce the number of people on the site following the guidelines for social distancing and all of that. But the new event is that people who've had their projects for their home renovations put on hold, those can finally get started again. And the, um, the, the, on the ISD page on the city's website, there is a form that you have to fill in and read guidelines and say that you will abide by the guidelines. And um, so pro those projects where people have been out of their houses and waiting to get back in and get started again, those can start under new under the new guidelines. So things are either currently running or about to start again. About to start again, right? So moving right along. So that's yeah, lots that's of good. lots of happy people because of that decision. Oh, I, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are anxious to get uh, restarted. Yes. Um, and how about let's talk about um, a new subject that came up regarding uh, delivery fee caps um, for food. So perhaps not to single out Grubhub or one of those, but something similar uh, to that kind of service, city council is looking to perhaps cap the delivery fees? Yes, so this all came to my attention via the, the chamber, mm -hmm. and it was Moldovia Restaurant that wrote a letter saying that they were having a hard time because they, have a, they in normal times, agree to pay a percent, like I think it's 30% of the bill. So if you pay $50 for your food, 30% of that goes to the delivery service depending on the delivery service, it's up or down. Um, and in these days where there's no dine-in eating, they're having a hard time making a go of it because so much of the money goes to the delivery fees, delivery charges. And um, so we started, we heard Moldovia restaurant told us that the San Francisco mayor had put a cap on fees in San Francisco. So we started the ball rolling to see what we could do here. And I know Cambridge and Boston are also looking into it. Mm -hmm. On Monday night, we passed a resolution asking the mayor to work with her city departments to find a way to cap the fees in Newton. And so now the ball is in the mayor's court. I know the law department is not thrilled with this idea because they, they've, they're they looking for a way to make it legal and haven't found it yet. Mm. Um, but I did have a conversation with the law department yesterday and they said, find out how San Francisco is enforcing their uh, executive order. So I've put in a, sent an email to the mayor of San Francisco to find out how they're doing it. 
hopefully something can work out here. I mean, is this sounds like it could be a legal battle because they're somewhat of a contract between the restaurants and the delivery service. Right. So I guess, yeah, finding out from the, the mayor of San Francisco can really lead to uh, lead by example. Yes. So I'm checking my email every moment, <laughs> hoping for a response, but I'm sure she has other things on her mind besides responding to my quest, my quest for capping the fees. I'm sure there are yeah. many other things going on. <laughs> right. Um, so that's something that's uh, perhaps coming forth. One thing that uh, you guys are discussing in the city council is the $2.5 million in emergency relief funds for low to middle income families. Um, can you explain a little bit about this and where it comes from and who really does benefit from it? So we heard from the Mass Housing Partnership, which does housing in, in Massachusetts, had collaborated with the Community Preservation Coalition across the state to tell the localities, the cities and towns, that you can use community preservation money to help with rental assistance. So we docketed an item to let the administration know that we as the council are interested in this. And uh, the, at the same time, uh, the mayor expressed an interest in this and the planning department began working on a proposal this proposal was heard by the Community Preservation Co the Committee and the Planning Board last Monday night. And there were a few changes that were proposed and they will be bringing a proposal to spend, I think it's, it is 2.5 million for rental assistance mm -hmm. for people who've lost their jobs because of COVID. And I think they're gonna make it under 80% of area meeting income, people will be eligible. And this proposal will be coming to the council at a committee, committee of the whole on Monday night coming up at seven o'clock for our, our, hopefully for our passage, but we'll see what happens. So this is basically CPA funds that will be turned around and used for um, COVID-19 related housing right. issues. Right. I guess there's also a $500,000 um, money, $500,000 is coming from the CDBG as well yes. to help with this? Yes. So it'll be for rental assistance and for some mortgage support. Mm -hmm. And um, both, if this is legal according to both sets of rules, community CPA money and the um, CDBG money. So it's, it's, it's legal in both accounts. And now we have to just see if the proposal is sound and if we're, if we're happy with it. Would it be similar to perhaps the Newton CARES, uh, Newton COVID-19 CARE Fund where people would apply and the bills would be paid directly and not people actually getting money? Exactly, the, the landlords would, people will apply, they'll explain the, the rental, their, their income, and what happened to their income, and the money will go directly to the landlords to pay the rent for three months, and I think it's 75% of the rent would be paid according to the proposal. So yeah, exactly. So that'll come up on May 11th, correct? May 11th, the Monday. Right. seven o'clock seven o'clock and that's also a big night for the mayor because she'll be presenting um the budget now do you foresee because everything is kind of up in the air do you foresee any trouble for the city council to um you know vote on on the final budget uh, do you see any changes in the works um because right now everything's kind of up in the air and not really knowing how I'm we're going to move forward right I'm, I'm sure there'll be some reductions that we will have to deal with as the budget goes along um, we have 45 days by law to approve the mayor's budget, um, and we will just squeak it in. I think we have a week to spare. I think our, our new budget process is scheduled to begin, as actually it begins tonight, we're reviewing the school's budget tonight, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the budget is presented on Monday, and we have worked out a schedule to get it done, I think by like the 23rd of June, something like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a few days to spare in there in case we need it. Now, how has, I guess, the city councilors been handling the Zoom calls? Um, has it made life easier, harder? Are you working more? <laughs> Are you working less? Uh, it's, it's the new norm at the moment. Um, We're definitely not working less. Um, but I, I was just talking to some councilors this morning. I think we're feeling Zoom fatigue. Um, it's it the meetings are getting done and it's a great way to get the work done. So I'm glad we have this method. The uh, we did get zoom bombed and early on uh, it was a programs and services committee meeting, but the clerk's office has been amazing. They figured out a way to stop that from happening and it has not happened again. 
Um, so that that's that worry is at least uh, in the in the back rearview mirror, and um, you know we're just getting our work done, working it, getting it done. It's we can't wait for the day when we can all be back in the chamber together. But in the meantime, we're using what we have. Yes, it seems to be working because we're uh, at New TV. I know that we're able to actually share more meetings because of these Zoom calls. Absolutely. You know, we had a meeting on, on our agenda with, with New TV to ask them about putting cameras in the committee rooms. Mm -hmm. And here this happens. So now we're doing a trial of actually televising many of our committee meetings. It's, that part is terrific. It is. Yeah. yeah, the more people know, the better off we all are. Right. Um, well, thank you, Councillor Albright. I appreciate you you taking the time to give us an update, and I'm sure I'll be checking in with you again shortly to, to see how things are going and moving along and perhaps face-to-face -face at some point, too. Terrific. Thanks. Newton News continues its recognition of high school seniors from Newton. You can send in your child's picture to be showcased in Newton's Class of 2020. Each week, we'll highlight students through the middle of June. You can email me at jenna at newtv.org to have your child featured. Congratulations to all, and here's this week's list of Newton's Class of 2020. Newton South High School senior Ethan DeTulio has challenged himself both academically by taking AP classes and athletically playing for Newton South baseball team. Ethan has also worked at Models in Newton. Ethan will be attending the University of Miami. Andy Goldberg from Newton South High School was a part of the cross country team and was its captain. He was also a part of the indoor track, outdoor track and field, Newton North Little League, Newton Senior League, Thundercat sports coach, and he is also known as an amazing son, brother, friend, student, and young man. He plans on attending the University of Michigan. Go Blue! Newton North High School senior Alec Jones played football and lacrosse and plans on attending Wentworth Institute of Technology. Amari Turner from Newton South High School is a four-year honor roll student, four-year varsity basketball with DCL All-Star and the captain, a BSU officer and leader, and she turned down multiple basketball offers to attend her dream college, Xavier University of Louisiana, with a 50% academic scholarship. She'll be majoring in psychology. The Newton Front Steps Project is a project to bring the Newton community together to recognize this unprecedented time in our lives and to raise money for COVID-19 relief efforts. From now through May 29th, a professional photographer will visit the front of your house and at a safe distance, take pictures of you during this stay-at-home period. Photos might include your entire family, your pets, your graduates with their cap and gown, or seniors with their prom attire. It's your decision how you want to be photographed, so be creative. And the best part, all they ask for is a donation of perhaps $50 to the Newton Rotary Foundation, who will pass 100% of your donation to the nonprofit organizations listed. You will receive three digital photographs that you are given permission to use on social media. These pictures will also be posted on the Newton Front Steps Project and Newton Rotary Facebook pages and shared. When you donate, you can choose any of the following efforts to support. Clear path for Veterans New England to provide food supplies to veterans for 10 to 14 days. The John M. Barry Boys and Girls Club to offer kid-centric check-ins. The West Suburban YMCA to aid with their Call for Kids initiatives. The second step to help survivors of domestic abuse get remote services. The New Arts Center to help offer online art classes. And the Newton Food Pantries to enable them to meet the greatly increased demand. More information and a sign-up are available online at newtonrotaryclub.com. I'm Cindy Cream, your Massachusetts State Senator. I'm also the Majority Leader of the Senate, and I have been working with my colleagues all across the state to pass laws to make life a little bit easier during this time of COVID-19. It has been difficult for all of us, and I am so sad about the people we have lost to the virus. I'm sad about what has occurred in our skilled nursing homes, in our assisted living, in our congregate living. My hope is that now that we have more tests and more reporting, we can see what happened and do better as we go forward. But I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to our first responders. Every time I go to the grocery store, I say thank you to the person at the checkout. 
the letter carrier that delivers our mail, the firefighters, the police, the ambulance workers, all of our first responders, the delivery people, they have put their life on the line and they have done the best for all of us, even though many of them have become sick. And so I think it's important to recognize what they've done and say thank you, and to our nurses and doctors and healthcare workers. These are difficult times and they have been willing to put their selves in a second to make our lives better. The things that we have been working upon are very varied. We waived the one week waiting period for unemployment insurance. We prepared a moratorium on eviction of foreclosure. We did a bill which would give healthcare workers additional liability coverage. We allowed municipalities to delay their taxes and we allowed individuals to not pay their federal or state taxes until July 15th. We waived the MCAS requirement so that you can graduate even if you haven't taken the MCAS. And we allowed restaurants to sell beer and wine, and now many restaurants are selling food. And best of all, I think, is my bill that I just filed that would allow mail-in voting. We should not be in a position where we have to worry about our health or worry about whether we do what we're democratically required to do and we hope to do, and that's vote. And my bill would allow you to vote by mail. It would also allow early voting. For those that want to come to in to vote, it would be for the September 1st primary and for the November election. If you want to come in early for a week ahead, you can do that. But if you want to vote by sending your ballot in, you can do that also. This and other bills such as this are going to be heard by the election committee. So stay tuned. We're going to have some good answers. But as we go forward, and we will go forward, while the governor delayed the potential for opening this week, he did recognize the need to look to the future. He set up a committee, and I'm going to be chairing a committee in the Senate, which will look at how we can function whether it's remotely or by being in the Senate and social distancing, how we are going to slowly get back to where we need to be. But let's remember this is going to be a different world for a while. Get used to the mass and get used to social distancing. But let's think of the good things that happened. I see people sitting out on their lawn, entertaining friends six feet apart, they're not rushing around. They're having a little quieter life. We may not be going to the movies right away. We may not be going to sports activities, but we will start resuming our lives. It's very important. It's important for us. It's important for the economy. But during this time, I want you to know that my office is open for business, you might say. We're answering our phones. We're working remotely. And many of you have been calling us if you have a problem, if you have an issue or question on unemployment, if you have an issue on domestic violence, whatever it is, please call and we'll do the best that we can to help you. So I hope and expect that I will have another opportunity to update you. And maybe at that time, we'll be able to talk about what our future is looking to us. But at this point, please be safe, wear your mask, and there are many good places here that you can get a mask. Even places are making masks. Wear your mask, social distance, and stay healthy. Thank you. This week, we spoke with chair of the fundraising committee for the Newton COVID-19 Care Fund, Rob Gifford, on how it works and who can apply for financial help. I'm here with Rob Gifford, the chair of the Newton COVID-19 Care Fund, who as of right now has raised over $600,000 with an almost eight hundred donors. Rob, this is amazing that uh, this fund in such a short time has raised so much. Uh, but before we get into, you know, the details, can you tell me what it is this new COVID-19 care fund is? Sure, sure. No, happy to. And just to clarify, I'm not chairman of the fund. I'm just chairman of this fundraising. Of the fundraising. So, the, so the fund is really, it's a, there are four major groups that came together around forming this fund, and it was really inspired by Mayor Fuller. A little over a month ago, she reached out to us and some other folks 
uh, to look at, at, at raising money for people who are facing financial distress uh, as a result of the pandemic. And, um, you know, it involves the city of Newton. Uh, the United Way is part, of the, is part of the group here that's making this fund work. And, uh, you know, United Way of Mass Bay has both contributed uh, funds and tremendous resources. There are fundraising portal. If you click onto those links and you want to make an application or you want to uh, contribute, it's all under the United Way uh, website, their backbone, if you will. They also work with the, you know, the key group here in Newton, Family Access, which is the group that's actually accepting uh, grant proposals and granting money to individuals in need. So it's really a four-part group. You know, people like me, citizens who are mainly raising money, then you've got the city, then you've got United Way and Family Access. So we're this kind of this coalition of four different uh, groups or organizations, and we've come together to uh, start this fund and raise it and, and now distribute uh, aid as needed. So how did you get involved? Uh, Mayor Mayor Fuller. Fuller. Yeah, no, no, it's just we got a call from uh, Mayor Fuller. She, you know, gave me and, uh, you know, Claire Sokoloff, my wife, who's also very active uh, in, in Newton, and asked us if we would uh, help out on the fundraising side and just getting the whole thing uh, started. And we, you know, we jumped at the opportunity to help. And this was a little bit over a month ago? Yeah, it was probably the, she, you know, we got the call maybe middle of uh, March and then the, the fund was formally, then we reached out to United Way uh, and they, they put us under their umbrella. So the fund was actually up and running by the 20th of, of I'm sorry, did I say May, I meant March. The fund mm -hmm. was up and running by the 20th of March. So it's a little over a month ago. Yeah, and in that month, as I mentioned earlier, this was, you know, uh, over $600,000 has been raised. Yeah, it's, it's astounding, amazing. and over 800 donors. Uh, yeah. You know, just the, and again, some of it initially was the, you know, the, you know, the fundraising team reaching out to, you know, businesses and individuals who, who we knew, uh, who we thought would be generous, and, and everybody was just unbelievably uh, uh, generous, uh, who we contacted. And then as it got up and running and it got more uh, pub publicity, if you will, through through efforts of the city and other groups, and it got spread around on Facebook groups and, you know, other other ways, just people from all over were clicking on the on the website and contributing. Some were giving credit card donations, other checks, others appreciated stock. I mean, they that's the great thing about being affiliated with the United Way. They, this is what they do. And they have this great backbone as, as kind of the fiscal agent for the fund. So, you know, initially solicited and then just unbelievable amounts of uh, generosity unsolicited, really just coming in through the website every day. So who will this help specifically? Like well, it's really targeted. Oh. Sure. It's, it's targeted to, to Newton residents mm -hmm. or people who work in Newton. Okay. Or people who either have their children in childcare or in schools in Newton, or Newton first responders who are facing childcare uh, issues, right? Because, yeah. as we all know, schools out, right? Preschool right. programs are out, and so that that's really the targeted group who, you know, are are really in need, who are below a, a, an income level, who don't have the financial resources. Uh, and they're facing immediate uh, expenses that they really can't meet. It could be rent, it could be medical, it could be childcare, uh, uh, though, you know, could be other regular bills. And they just, um, given the suddenness of the shutdown here and how many people, you know, are facing, you know, these sorts of uh, financial stresses, it's really meant to be there now uh, to help those people make it, make it through. Now these funds won't go directly to the recipients, but in fact go towards paying their bills. Is that yeah. So 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 what happens is, and, and as if people go onto the website, uh, you can either donate or you can you can seek help, and then you sign up online. If you're if you're looking for uh, a grant, you sort of fill out an initial you know inquiry that goes to Family Access, which is a wonderful social service agency, which has been. Uh, which has worked closely with the United Way and closely with the city for, for a long time. I, they're over 100 years old in terms of how long they've been in Newton. And uh, one of the many things they do is, is, is helping people with direct uh, uh, grants who are, who are in need. And so the form goes to Family Access, then, they, then there's a kind of an interview process where they assess your need. Uh, and then they, uh, let's say, you know, you can't pay your cell bill, you can't pay your rent, 
you've got childcare that, that, you know, that you need because schools are out. So you submit to them, you know, the uh, bills that you need to pay. Uh, and then family access will say, yes, this is a, this is a, a grant that's worthwhile. Uh, we should fund this. And then they will directly fund what, whether it's the landlord or the childcare or the medical, uh, uh, the pharmacy or whoever, the doctor, whatever it is, uh, they'll direct uh, the cell bill. They'll directly fund those, uh, those costs. Will this be a one-time um, experience for them or can it be ongoing? Do they have to apply every month? Well, you know, we, we're, we're still in the first month and so right. we'll see, right? Uh, see. But it, it's very clear, you know, and we all get on the phone every Friday morning, the, the four different groups I described, the City United Way, Family Access, and the fundraising group to sort of see how we're doing and what's going on. And clearly, uh, you know, these are month to month needs. And so uh, people will be back. We've at this point, we basically set, you know, a limit of 2,500 per individual per family. Mm -hmm. Now folks aren't asking for that much right away. So I imagine if somebody comes back next month uh, and has the same sort of needs, you know, we would hopefully, or family access would hopefully be able to, to, to repeat. Uh, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. And right, yeah, we're still, we're still waiting. We're still, and, and new applications are coming. I mean, they've gotten well over 200 applications. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the vast majority of those are, 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 are fully qualifying to meet the criteria mm -hmm. and they're processing those and they've sent out, you know, well over $100,000 to date with a lot of money to go out in the queue. So, you know, we're just going to have to see how the applications come in and, you know, how much money we have. We have an incredible, you know, start, if you will, uh, with, with $600,000 or over that. Um, and hopefully that will go the distance and, you know, if it doesn't, you know, we may, you know, go back around and, you know, ask some of our more generous donors or all donors if they'd be willing to contribute more, but we'll cross and, that bridge. Right. Hopefully. Um, uh, how can one, I mean, you're still accepting donations, correct? We are. Oh, absolutely. So if you just, uh, and I think you mentioned it would be listed, it would be on the website mm -hmm. or, or on your, on your uh, program there. If you just click on that website, or if, you, if you're not there and you can't remember the website, if you just put in your, in your Google browser, uh, Newton COVID Care Fund, the first thing that will pop up will be this fund. And it will be under a United Way banner, and then it'll say Newton COVID Care Fund. And uh, there'll be a button to click. It'll describe the fund in, in, in detail, like what we're doing and how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. It'll show the list of, of major business and, and initial supporter donors. Uh, it will have a button to click to give money. And, and if you give, you can do credit card, check, you know, or, you know, from a, some people have donor advised funds or other things, whatever it is, United Way can accept it. It'll have another button that will take you directly to the application if you need, if you need support. If you need support. Now, how can others, so besides just donating, are there other ways that perhaps businesses or residents can, can help? Um, like, obviously donating is one, but perhaps volunteering at some point? You know, we've talked about that. The, the volunteering uh, aspect is, is a little tricky right now, given, right. you know, given sort of where we, where we are because of this pandemic. I, th I think if, if folks want to do more than give, the best thing they can do is to send around the, the link Mm -hmm. uh, to their networks. Uh, if they're part of a, a neighborhood listserv or if they've just got a, a circle of, of Newton friends who they email with um, or, uh, you know, Facebook, just to kind of get the word out. And, and the more people who see it and they see it from a trusted friend, uh, they'll be more inclined to give. So I think that's probably, in addition to just direct donation, uh, that's probably the most you know, valuable th uh, additional thing that somebody can do. Well, this is great, Rob. Um, what a, a feat you've made in, in a month. I mean, well, it's, it's, it really, it's been, you know, we've got, uh, you know, a wonderful team of people on the fundraising side. And then uh, uh, again, between United Way, the, the, the city and, and family access, it's really a, it's a team effort. And it's also just a sign of the uh, amazing generosity in this community you know, that it's, that, that people have been so generous so quickly. It's, yes, it has been amazing how we can all come together. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, that's, that aspect of it's been really, really nice to see. Well, thanks, Rob. We'll check in with you soon and okay. um, see how it's going. Or if you need more help with donations or spreading the word, uh, we'll certainly help you there. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. All right, thanks, Rob. Okay, take care.
Newton News was brought to you in part by The Village Bank. Your village, your bank.